So let's consider our nucleus, which is spinning. And if it's spinning, then we can think of it as a spinning positive charge. If you've ever had a, a course on electricity, you'll have learned that if you have a, a rotating flow of current here, then what that does is generate a magnetic field. Okay, so we can think of our spinning hydrogen nucleus as generating its own little magnetic field. Okay, with our nucleus, we're dealing with a quantum particle. We've already seen that the energy levels for these microscopic particles in the atomic and molecular world are always quantized. And if we do a quantization of spin, then that will tell us that we can have a multiplicity of spin levels to I plus 1, where I is the spin quantum number. Well, for the hydrogen nucleus, we only have I is equal to 1 half. So the number of energy levels we have is 2. So quantization tells us that, that there are only two allowed energy levels for the, the hydrogen nucleus. So in terms of our spin levels, we can have the low energy one, where it's properly aligned with the field, or we can have the high energy one, where it's not aligned with the field. And is what this is telling us is that at least in the presence of a magnetic field, our spinning particle can only be oriented in one of two directions, which is great for us because that means that the spectroscopy is really simple. There's only two possible energy levels and they're separated by some energy we're going to call delta E. These energy levels are really, really close together. So when we do this spectroscopy, we're not using, certainly not using ultraviolet photons, we're certainly not using infrared photons. We actually need photons which are way down in the radio wave region of the spectrum. Those two energy levels are only distinct from one another if we put the nucleus in a magnetic field. If we don't put it in a magnetic field, then the two things are degenerate with one another. So to do the spectroscopy at all, we have to apply a magnetic field. So we take our nucleus, we apply a magnetic field to it, and when we increase the magnetic field, the separation of our two energy levels increases because the separation is a function of the interaction between our nuclear magnetic field and our applied magnetic field. If we make the applied magnetic field big, then the splitting, delta E, is going to be big. Where spin minus a half, this is the one that's opposed to the field, goes up in energy, and the spin plus a half, that's the one which is aligned with the applied field, goes down in energy. They go up and down by equal amounts, and the position of the energy level, the delta E, is proportional, linearly proportional to the applied field. So as we increase B, then delta E increases proportionately. So we know that delta E is proportional to B. We would like to have a constant of proportionality in there. We call it H gamma divided by 2 pi. The characteristic constant, the thing that's characteristic of the hydrogen nucleus in there, is this parameter gamma, the magnetogyric ratio. And it's a constant which is a characteristic of a particular nucleus. So we can write our delta E as being H cross gamma B. Or, to put it in the long form, delta E is equal to H gamma over 2 pi times the applied field strength B. Just to express things in terms of frequencies rather than energies, here's our expression for delta E. We know that delta E can also be expressed in terms of Planck's constant times the frequency. So instead of expressing things in terms of delta E, we can express them in terms of a frequency. The frequency nu is equal to gamma over 2 pi times the applied field strength B.